Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we will be talking about why a potential um, La Nina winter will have uh, rather extreme impacts um, on our um, well, on our winter. Uh, if you don't know what a La Nina is, it's basically a area of um, waters that the Climate Prediction Center, or sorry, um, yeah, the Climate Prediction Center tracks, and it's right off the coast of South. <clears throat> South America and whether or not uh, the west coast of South America and whether or not these are below average by half a degree or above average by half a degree differs be you know between a La Nina when it's cooler and an El Nino when it's um, warmer and this year if you were to take a look at the prediction that the Climate Prediction Center has um, <clears throat> you could see that it favors <clears throat> favors a La Nina through the winter. I mean, it, you can see that the chances of a neutral are rising. And if you recall, in my previous video, I made a video <clears throat> about what, um, you know, why we could be really looking at a La Nina transitioning into a neutral throughout the middle part of the year. <clears throat> and in this video, today's video, I'm assuming that that transition doesn't happen and we just pretty much stay with the La Nina, La Nina the whole time and how that differs from, I guess, the last video I was trying to show you guys. But in reality, the differences are still kind of negligible. And I just want to add on that this is still all pretty much speculative and mainly for the fun of it. But let's just assume <clears throat> that, again, the winter for this year stays as a La Nina and there's no transition into a neutral. And you can see this is the past uh, several years of the Enzo. You can see we have just uh, been dealing with already two years of La Nina winters. And um, basically, uh, you can see that this takes us back to 2010. We've had, you know, a few more La Nina years. But um, the more extensive, if you will, graph of all of this, which takes us all the way back to 1950, is um, right here by clicking this little little hyperlink. You can go to the Climate Prediction Center, and it shows you all the La Ninas that have happened ever since 1950. And you can see that, um, you know, there's been a lot. And obviously, I'm not going to go over every year. But I want to go over some of the more recent ones. So 2020, 2021 was one of the more recent... Um, La Niña's um, last year was also a La Niña, so let's let's go back to last year. So last year's winter wasn't as extreme for a La Niña, though definitely there were some things that were, um, I guess, if you will, um, worthy of noting. One of the things was the extreme cold that occurred across the United States through mo most of January and February. While this wasn't a nationwide, you could see that this is what the anomaly graph looks like from January through February of this current year. And you can see that, obviously, it, it was pretty chilly, especially across the northern plains. I'm sure folks that live in North Dakota also remember the <clears throat> the series of blizzards that just absolutely raked through much of uh, much of the northern plains this uh, past uh, second half of the winter and how Bismarck um, marked one of its uh, snowiest winters on record. Um, if not, um, yeah, I think it was one of the snowiest ones. I don't want to say the snowiest one, but I remember that there were, um, you know, like Minot uh, picked up, uh, what, like almost 40 inches in that one blizzard that occurred in I think it was March or February absolutely incredible um, but uh, a more I guess more um, significant uh, lining out winter was the one before that and uh, the thing is that you know a lot of people may remember the 2020 2021 winter in whatever way they remember it um, but overall on a grand scale speaking of things um, you could, if you, you know, this is probably still fresh in your memories, how we had that giant Arctic outbreak in the uh, middle of February and how that just <clears throat> caused a uh, massive surge of cold air across uh, the, um, the south and how, if you recall those videos that we all saw from the south, just pipes freezing, um, you know, aquariums getting frozen over. It was an absolute, it was an absolute nightmare and just, you know, heavy snow across the south. So that was definitely a, a thing that, um, you know, even sparked, uh, you know, political debates about the power grid of the United States and whether or not it's, you know, sufficient or whatnot. So definitely it was a year to remember in terms of extremes. I remember here in the Chicago area, we got, well, like at one point we had three and a half feet of snow on the ground. Um, there was a combination of lake effect and several winter storms right after the other, you know, coming one after the other after the other. So, um, yeah, definitely a, uh, a crazy year. But, you know, going back to the Climate Prediction Center with some of these years, um, so next one is 2017, 2018, the next La Nina here. Um, and if we are to take, I'm not going to show 16, 17, because that one was one of the years where it transitioned into a neutral, which could happen this year. But I made a video about that last time. 2017, 2018, well, let's see. That one wasn't as harsh of a winter, say. Um, 
maybe in terms of cold uh, for at least a good portion of the United States, but there were some still extremes. So the new year, it, it was kind of coined the New Year's out cold outbreak, uh, where a good portion of the United States you could see was just absolutely brutally cold compared to average. This isn't actual temperature thermometer readings, but departure from normal times. You know, Chicago, what is this, January 1st? Our average is around um, 28 during the day. So when you have, you know, around 20 below, it's, you know, around 10 degrees during the day, that, that's very cold. And um, that was obviously very historic. Another thing that occurred during the, that same winter was the <clears throat> 2018 Nor'easters. Um, you can see that there was four of them within a matter of three weeks. I'm sure many across the Northeast remember that. So that was another extreme event. And there were a few others as well that were memorable. So I'm just kind of trying to show you that uh, most La Nina years that I've you know chosen, I could keep doing this for many years, um, have very similar uh, kind of results. Always some uh, either extreme cold, extreme um, snow, or it could be also extreme heat, extreme warmth. Uh, the the 2016-2017 winter, at least for my area, which again was a La Nina to start with, but ended up with a neutral, was still an extreme year. We, I remember here, got I think like 20 inches plus in December, followed by January and February that were really dry um, and also warm. And in February, we had a tornado outbreak. So it was also a year of extremes. And that's what I'm saying that this year will probably be the same. And on top of that, we also have a climate. <clears throat> that is definitely becoming more extremes, you know, for whatever reason people believe in, but it is, um, you know, um, you, you may think it's extreme in whatever way you want, or for whatever reason it is, uh, it, but it definitely is getting more um, extreme that, you know, records are being, uh, I guess, more frequently broken and more frequently set. And if, um, yeah, really people that don't really um, see that are essentially in denial or just not observative. Uh, do note that 2011-2012 20, was also a La Nina year that was uh, followed by a massive drought throughout most of the summer in uh, following that following year. But I want to pull up an example from 2010-2011. Um, it was, it, which again was a La Nina year. If you recall that, we, there was, you know, the Groundhog Day blizzard, a massive storm across the central United States, and also um, a very, very cold across, um, to, there was also a very similar cold outbreak of, um, of cold that was actually often compared to their most recent one, 2021. And uh, this was from February, to, you can see 2011, also very chilly temperatures, not as chilly, and this wasn't, I think, the core of it, but um, I couldn't find any good graphic about it. But obviously, what you will probably remember is, well, there was a tornado outbreak that was absolutely killer, and that was, again, possibly um, triggered by the help of a La Nina, and uh, yeah, definitely a, um, it was also a legendary winter. I mean, here in the Midwest, I remember it was, it was one heck of a winter, um, so that's that. But I do want to say that... Um, you know, that is what the historical years have, uh, I guess, produced. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's what's going to be happening this year in terms of, you know, extremes. It could be a year more like last year where it was a bit more muted, but... Um, I, I really doubt it. Uh, there's a lot of things that are pointing even towards the, um, I guess, the fact that um, if there were to be a... Uh, a La Nina that transitions into neutral, which you could see based on the confidence on this, it's pretty it's pretty little according to this model outlook. It ranges anywhere from a La Nina to an El Nino to neutral, which is why I'm making several variations of these videos. You know why a La Nina could bring this, why neutral could bring this, because this is pretty messy as organized, unorganized as you can pretty much get. So anything's possible. Um, and I'll just kind of make more of these videos, you know, what will happen if a neutral um, ensues? What if we exit the La Nina a lot earlier? I'll make a video about that. What if we just stay in a La Nina, which is today's video, which again, I'm calling for more extreme weather, which, in, which includes cold and snow. Um, I think for a good portion of the Midwest and Northeast, I will be releasing a winter outlook probably sometime later this month. My first one for the fun of it. And, um, you know, what will happen if we, say, get into a... Um, uh, you know, La Nina transitioning rapidly into a neutral. Again, I'm not going to talk about an El Nino because that seems very unlikely. But, you know, that, that transition from La Nina to, neutral, uh, to a neutral midwinter has only occurred four other times in history. And I made a video about that and why that also could mean uh, very similar things as just what an La Nina would bring. So uh, that is that. Um, and I kind of wanna wanted to just show you that. I think it was pretty interesting. And I just want to remind you that, again, La Ninas have been historically a very, very um, a volatile, um, have brought very, very volatile winters and springs and falls into the United States. So I think that's probably what's on forecast uh, for this year as well. You know, a lot of people 
don't want that. Um, and, you know, I, I think that's, that's unfortunate uh, that we will probably be dealing with that. Obviously, I don't really want that either, but I think, uh, you know, I'm not trying to go off of what I want. It's just what I think will be occurring. And do note that uh, I forgot to say this winter we did have that infamous uh, 2021 tornado outbreak across the, you know, especially the Kentucky area. I'm sure if you remember the candle factory, the Amazon warehouse that was, uh, you know, blown down over. So that was, um, that was this year as well, which was a La Nina. All right, that is basically it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all on the next episode. See ya.